I'd then like to invite the last speaker for this session, Mira Markus Kalisch, who is going to talk about reliable, replicable knowledge and data analysis towards precise disease signatures. Mira is from Tel Aviv University. Anyway. Yes, thank you very much. And um, uh, following the, the long session, I want to create some further challenges and um, maybe relate to what we talked so much about uh, efficacy and quality and maybe, um, you know, even following the last plenary session about uh, precision, precise, and personalized medicine that are big challenges and provide you some tools and maybe some questions and I do hope it will go into the regulatory later on in the future. But uh, given the very, very short time that we have, I'll, I'll actually provide some teasers, and I hope you will approach me later because we don't have uh, too much time. And being the last uh, speaker, I will try to give you some aperitif at the end, and I do hope that we'll, uh, as I said, elaborate on all that uh, later on. Um, but really, uh, when we are talking about assessing efficacy and risk management and all those things, how accurate and how good are we really? And that has to be um, faced, and I think uh, more and more papers and more and more criticism are on this uh, type. So I, as, I, as you saw uh, Monet further, I want to look at the broad picture, and I want to take just as an example uh, the healthy aging, but it's not only that. Um, I'm talking about looking, on, as I said, on the broad picture, and if I'm talking about any disease and aging, I'm talking about the clinical data for sure, about the genetics like we heard for sure, but also about the environmental, of the physical envi environment, the, met the mental environment, the, the nutrition. There are so many features that we have to look at the same time. And even we were talking a lot about drugs, even about drug addiction, because now when we are talking in one of the projects um, that I'm just telling you that we are doing now with a pharmaceutical, is um, the side effects, the addiction, and so on. And the NIH is talking about that so much lately. But we can see it one, once we develop, even in the clinical trials, there are some symptoms. So I, I want to look on this big picture, for sure, in the best um, ethical and, and right way, but using the right tools to um, evaluate and to do the right prediction, reliable prediction, replicable and reproducible. And that we are not there yet, and there are very few. And also, this is a very big data, but actually we are in a very small data because we don't have enough repetition, enough examples, enough patient records to, to verify all those many parameters that we have. And I'm talking about that many times, but uh, we are trying to develop uh, some tools. And um, speaking about the tools, as I said, we are talking about, it doesn't work. Point is the green button. It's good, okay, so. So, okay, so we are talking about big data, but actually, as I said, very, very small. I don't want to go into that, therefore we need new, new tools, new algorithms, but not only tools because we don't have all the mathematical tools yet. Many things were developed. Those, um, we are talking about millions of data. We don't know how to combine patient records from different source for different origins. We don't know even in one hospital how to combine all. So it's not simple, but that, this is a big challenge. And just as an example, I will give you two very, very short examples that, as I said, I will be very happy to elaborate later. It's just the Agni Data Bank, the American Data Bank, which is very famous. More than 2017 uh, papers were published. But still, if you look in the data, and that's what we did, we just look in the data, the best predictor is the missing values. And, and, and you see, all the black ones are the missing values. So 
Actually, you don't need to analyze anymore, just to look on the missing values. But even there, what is missing in purpose and what is missing not in purpose? What is informative and what is not? So we need tools to do the right imputation and the right uh, evaluation and, and cleaning the data. And all that, so I, I didn't want to put here the list of publication and tools, but we developed heat maps and we developed on R and we developed other imputation tools and dealing with missing values that I will be very happy to share with everybody. But this is the first stage that we have to do. And, and very few are really doing. And, and also, we are coming and publishing with the best results we, we have. This is the academia and so on. But then it goes to drugs, and it's, it's, it has to be uh, verified. So just to give you one example of an algorithm that we uh, developed, so, so since we didn't have enough tools to deal, and we, the, there is small data versus big, uh, big data, as I said, it's not big, it's small. So we, we decided to utilize the knowledge of the expertise, the knowledge of the physician, because they have scars, they did it a lot, and since we don't have enough information, we utilized and we did it in three steps. The first step is really to, to utilize the knowledge, to the features of the physician, then go to um, a supervised and unsupervised open clustering and analysis and end up but by adding the biomarkers that we find. And we did it on the ADNI after the imputation and after the cleaning of the data. And we were able to, to, to um, come up with uh, new subtypes. But on, on the top, you can see the, uh, the uh, new one at the bottom is the ADNI assignment. So at the ADNI, you have five assignments. See that they are mixed. In the top, we were able to, to really uh, separate them to different one, and we were able to um, define new subtypes. And uh, going with these new subtypes, we evaluated in many tools. We combined many tools. And this is um, another thing that was mentioned earlier in using simulation. So you can use many statistical tools, but you have to evaluate anything. And the best thing is to combine. But those are the new subtypes. I don't have time. And uh, we just took the new subtypes, and we went to clinical trials with um, uh, in Italy with the Gemini group and we were able and that is the result I'm sorry I have to run so fast and those are the results that we have and in the in the uh, left side you see the original applying the 3C on the original data and then you see on the predicted and you see how good and how evaluated and now we have two um, drugs that are on the way to specific subtypes of Alzheimer's disease. Again, I'm, I'm very happy to share more, but um, we will have um, to do it in a, a longer lecture. So, again, okay. So, another example that I want to give you because um, uh, Donald talked earlier about nano atero, and I wanted to relate more into the nano. So we were looking here on, again, it was very small data, and, and we were trying to do the best with very small um, doses and very small uh, list of data. And we were looking on uh, the, the best analysis that we can provide in order to, to look on the cell response to specific uh, uh, nanoparticles. Okay, so um, actually um, that, that what we were targeting in order to see, uh, again, we were looking and cleaning the data and, and providing the best tools to do that. And, and this is the data that we have. Uh, uh, and and we, we had very small sets from different uh, point of view, and that's more familiar to, with you, and that was uh, towards the in vitro, in vitro response to nanoparticles. And, and I wouldn't go here into the, the details, but you can say uh, we, we combined almost uh, 14 different statistical schemes in order to, to identify 
the, the very small part that we found as safe. Again, safe um, in the most accurate and reliable way. It's easier to take very small samples and say, okay, according to this 25 or 24, we predict it's safe and the p-value is good enough. I must admit, it's not good enough. And therefore, we were trying to apply better tools, and I will be happy to share them. And, you know, since we are very far from God's kitchen, I wanted to, to suggest another thing. And we heard today in other United, United lecture about, um, you know, going to the Amazonas and going to, to find some, some clues and some understanding. So I want to present you the Dead Sea that we just established a research institute. But the special thing, and if I'm speaking about aging, um, it's not only the nice, nice view and so on, it's a very special environment. And we know already for, for Alzheimer already that, that uh, polluted air has a, a really problematic impact on Alzheimer. And it's proven and published already. So here we have 6% more oxygen, unpolluted, unallergenic uh, air, and also some aerosols or may, that may relax, um, relax us and so on. So just speaking about that and um, the, the, what can we do with that, we will uh, identify different diseases that we can, um, you know, uh, benefit from this environment, natural environment. And that's very spe special because, you know, th we found that animals behave differently. Um, one um, plant that is toxic all over the world at the Dead Sea, it's okay. So, you know, we found and we don't understand yet e uh, uh, everything. Therefore, as I said, a lesson from nature. And here we have already, um, uh, you know, some diseases that we identified. And the most obvious one are the cardiovascular be because of the 6% more uh, partial um, uh, oxygen pressure and, you know, the breathing. And those things are already proven. We just need to do it more to go into uh, more understanding what are the ingredients and what are the special combination that we can uh, study from that. And um, uh, going further uh, to that, you just heard other or not, and speaking about nano, again, coming back to nano, uh, she said it today, but it, it was really proven that uh, she wouldn't be able to crystallize this uh, uh, without because it was a living um, at the Dead Sea, otherwise she wouldn't be able to crystallize this ribosome. It wasn't stable enough. So, you know, and, and, and we, we are speaking about a different algae there that know how to do DNA repair. And we have now um, a, a special project with NASA to learn how the algae is doing the, the DNA repair. After it's dead by all measurements, once the saltiness is going down, it knows how to, to repair the DNA. So that's just uh, examples to trigger you and to bring you over to do your test at the Dead Sea once you have the drugs. And um, um, speaking about that, we had a very nice summit. Uh, and this is a link that you can listen to all lectures, but I invite you to come and join us on March next March, 11 to 13, for the next, um, the next uh, summit. And um, I have in my booth, there is the poster and everything. And uh, coming back to healthy aging, which I really um, am trying very much. We had a symposium. The link is here. You can um, also uh, listen to all lecture. But the special thing is not only that the Dead Sea is a wonderful better site for healthy aging. Speaking about the paraplex, speaking about minerals, speaking about the safe sun, and the, the breathing and all the rest things that I was talking about. And, and so that is another thing and another big barrier and big threat of, of us, of, of the, not only the, the medicine, but the economy. And, Every one of us, we want a quality of life. We don't want low gravity. We don't want end of life. We want to understand, yeah, I'm finishing. This is the last one. Um, uh, uh, we want to really 
um, do it at the best. I have time left one minute. Well, that was for the questions. Ah, okay. <laughs> <laughs> so I don't know if there's questions in the okay, room, but <laughs> okay, okay. So I'm finishing. So um, as I said, just it was just a teaser, and um, uh, I just invite you to talk to me. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mira. <laughs> Anyone has a question for Mira? There's, there, there's a minute left. <laughs> Presumably there are equivalent data from a lot of spas and places where you go and take the waters and all these things where you can make a similar comparison. I did, I didn't okay, get you go to take the waters, you go to Baden-Baden or you go to wherever it is, or you go to, because the atmosphere is so good or the waters are so good or Bath, classically in, 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 in England. So presumably there are some historical data that would say how much it makes an effect for you to compare with. So I will give you two examples that we are doing. First of all, uh, tomorrow I'm, I'm going to, to deal with, um, you know, tomorrow night, with some English data. And, and, uh, and we are doing comparison in different um, areas. But, but, but it's not only, I must say, it's not only um, the, the physical environment. It's also the culture. And it's also whether you are married or not. And I published two papers about you know, cancer and cardiovascular regarding those issues. But it's more than that. Um, you know, Speaking about the Dead Sea, and I just take you to the extreme, we are all talking now uh, on life in extreme conditions. We have to be prepared for that as well. And how does nature, with all the millions here, how does it cope with that? And how does the animals and the plant and us, human beings, be ready to, to, to cope with that? So it's not only the disease. And another example I want to do, uh, tell you that I'm doing now with Teva. Very and short. An yeah, very short. <laughs> and, an English, uh, and an English company, um, you know, the UK cohort and, and so on, about um, uh, side effects of drugs for 30 years to see all that we can combine as side effects and not only addictions. OK. Thank you very much, Mira. I think if you have the time, we need to close the session. But uh, thanks Thank to you. all the speakers and uh, thanks to the audience. Thank you very much.